He's the voiceover studio engineer of the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia Tech grad with a knowledge of recording studios unmatched in his field. He's a voice actor from Buffalo, New York, with 30 years experience in recording studios and behind the mic. He solves people's home voiceover studio problems in the blink of an eye. Together, there's no studio problem they can't solve, and they'll do it for you tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Now, live from a basement in Buffalo and an office in L.A., here are Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Good evening and welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the we West. we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. All right. Well, we got that out of the way anyway. So good evening and welcome to our show. We are live worldwide on the net. We have been planning this for months and we're actually, well, we're not on the air. Well, I guess we are. I suppose we're off on a satellite somewhere being boomed, uh, you know, across the waves over to Egypt and, and Lithuania and, uh, you know, I was going to say the Soviet Union. It's been a few weeks. Anyway, we're here to solve your studio problems. Uh, if you're a voice actor or you are you do audiobooks or you just like to record at home and you have problems with your home voiceover studio, that's what George and I do. We are consultants and engineers and uh, we know how to solve these things. We've seen it all. And we've been trying to uh, find a way to communicate with as many people as possible. And we came up with East West Audio Body Shop and we're here for you. If you have a question for us, we'd love to have you on. We've got a couple of people already lined up for tonight. But if you have a question for us, uh, you can go to our our Facebook page, hey, Chris. East West Audio Body. Uh, you there, Chris? East West Audio Body Shop, and we can... Uh, okay, stand by. I, I can hear you, George. It's a... <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> like, like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a dress rehearsal, and it's going to be worth it just just for that alone. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to be here to answer your questions. And if you have a question, you can email it to us at ewabs, E-W-A-B-S, one at verizon.net or go to our Facebook page, East West Audio Body Shop, which is East West, one word, Audio Body Shop, another word. And you'll get into our Facebook page or our Facebook group and you can join that and leave a question there and we'll get back to you and make sure that if we think your question is airworthy will let you on so uh why don't we get things going right now so good evening who's calling east west audio body shop um actually i was trying to reach uh, nunzio's pizza but i'll uh i'll i'll ask a question anyway this is chris from north carolina chris from north carolina yes hi uh you wouldn't happen to have a pizza to go and no anchovies i guess so no, uh sorry I'll just ask something about my booth. Uh, I've got, okay. uh, I built a booth, didn't, uh, did not invest in a uh, screen box, as it were. Uh, but I do, uh, we do have something that we built here. Uh, four by six. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, it is kind of on the square. But uh, four by six and uh, seven foot high, something like that, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Aurelex all around. I think it's a... Uh, two by three window tilted, but, uh, I do have it tightened up as best I possibly can, but the door, uh, still has bits of, uh, I can still see bits of light through it. And the big thing is, is that I'm still getting a little bit of rumble when the old trucks drive by outside. Uh, I do have Aurelex on the inside of the door and of course carpet on the outside is more cosmetic than anything. But, uh, is there anything I can do right. to minimize that, that, uh, that vibration coming you know, through the house, through the window, and then through the door here. Well, there's a number of factors you can do to mitigate that. Uh, number one, what kind of a microphone are you using? Uh, it says Newman on it. Newman. Hello, Newman. Newman. Hello, hello, Newman. Alfred E. It's an Alfred E. <laughs> TLM 103 model. Oh, just like the one I got. Uh, Yay. An excellent microphone. The problem with a Neumann, if you are in a home studio, and that's not to discourage people from having a TLM-103, uh, is that the Neumanns are expensive and they're good mics because they're extremely sensitive. And, you know, I've heard stories about uh, 
this one guy had a Neumann U87, which is you know very similar to the the 103, only about about fifteen hundred dollars more. Uh, and it um, he kept hearing this rolling sound as he was recording. And he was like, what is it? He's running through the house. He couldn't figure out what it was. Turned out some, it was, the, the U87 was so sensitive, it was picking up some kid roller skating out in front of his house. So the idea is to not have a really, really sensitive mic if you can't really have what we like to call an acoustically sterile environment. Uh, so that's, that's a problem. So what you've done is you've created a soundproof booth, but you're still getting a lot of, a lot of vibration. Yeah, soundproof there. is definitely a... Um... It's it's tough to come up with something like that in a home. But really, another thing you can do is if it really is just low-frequency stuff, the really low rumbly stuff, it's just um, switch into your mic preamp or do it in software afterward. Just use a high-pass filter um, to take the rumble out of the recordings best possible. Um, because the That's money you spend, yeah, 80 hertz, even maybe higher depending on your situation. Um, because... The money you would spend to to mitigate that last issue you're dealing with in that room it would be tremendous. Um, and chances are, it may not be something worth dealing with where you you could just filter it out by some uh, you know careful use of EQ. So that's always something to consider as well. Have you ever, have you ever tried doing anything like that, Chris? Uh, I, not, not specifically, not with a, you know, not through using EQ, f uh, fearing that it's going to have some kind of impact on, you know, the, rec the final recorded sound of my voice. Sure. sure. Uh, realizing well, that, you know, 80 to a hundred is, there's not a whole lot of that in there, at least uh, for me. Um, does it have anything to do <laughs> with the composition of the door? Well, I mean, the door, the entire booth, um, you would need a door that's about a half a foot to three quarters of a foot thick with two layers of drywall on each side um, that would weigh about 300 pounds to even come close to stopping that kind of stuff. Okay, Just, I'll I be mean, right back and get one. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, all right, I guess not. It's, uh, it's just, it's, lo the lower the frequency, the more energy, and the longer the wavelength of the sound. And the longer wavelength can pass through thicker materials. And so... It's really difficult stuff to get rid of. There's no, there's no foam or insulation on the planet that's going to stop that stuff. It's all about mass and air gaps. So, right, right. But anything at that lower frequency really is probably below the frequency that your voice usually is at. So if you if you key some of that stuff out, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. And I don't. People probably won't notice. Think that'll help you out there, Chris. I do think so. It is something that when it does happen, I can see it on the waveform. And it is not something that happens that often. So I just want to really just keep everything tweaked up as best I can for my clients and keep everybody happy. Thank Excellent. You. Well, thanks for calling. I really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank you and all the beast of luck on the show. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, one down. Amazing. It looks like it's actually going to kind of work. We can get through people, and we're and we're it's it's going to actually happen here. I'm so glad to hear that. Okay, so all right, so what did we learn from that? We learned that it's impossible to have a totally soundproof uh, home studio. So you have to mitigate things by. Uh, Hello. Oh, Hi, who's George. calling? All right, yes, we're going to have sir. one more. We're going to have one more caller on here. We're still getting a little, we're still learning the board out in California there. You have to understand what we're doing here is I'm here in Buffalo where it's not raining and George is out in California where it's raining like gangbusters out there, although it's supposed to rain here pretty soon too. So we're figuring the internet's just going to get washed out and we're going to lose this whole thing one time. <laughs> or another. And the next time and, we have a caller in the second segment, I'll have actually figured out the board by that time. <laughs> That's, that would be a good thing. So anyway, anyway, Who's calling? Hello? Who's calling? Who's on East West Body Audio Body Shop with us? Uh, hello? Hello, you're on. Is it me? It is you. Who are you? <laughs> uh, my name is Bob and Beam, and I'm in Escondido, California, and it hasn't started raining yet. It sounds like it's raining because uh, the signal is dropping out a lot from uh, Bob and right now. Let's uh, reconnect. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Let oh, me. No. Uh, oh, no, not, you're there now. Now Go you're ahead. good. Go ahead. Okay. Well, hi. Um, I wanted to talk about this issue that I had with um, 
with Pro Tools. Okay. Well, All that's right. That's an issue um, in itself. Got my Pro Tools hat on. Okay. Well, yeah, um, I was running Pro Tools 7, and my laptop took a dump. Um, it was it was older, and uh, the the screen totally died. And I did a little investigate investigatory work and found that uh, it would cost me more to repair the screen than to just buy a brand new laptop, which I eventually did. And then I reloaded Pro Tools on, but couldn't get it to really work uh, after I had uh, put on some antivirus. Um, software. So <laughs> the people at Digi Design could not help me. I mean, I spent hours on the phone with them trying to get it to work. And we kind of deduced that it was uh, a big problem with the uh, antivirus software, which will remain unnamed. <clears throat> but it was okay. a, a, an all invasive kind of problem. So what I ended up eventually doing is reloading the whole operating system because I had to wipe out all artifacts and all little DLL files and everything where the antivirus had placed itself. And then when, when I tried to get Pro Tools working again, it was fine and wonderful. But what I had to do in order to do that was to go into my MS config and totally uncheck all of the normal operating things that you do when when you're recording, uh, including all internet, email, everything. I mean, everything. I mean, everything. Uh, <laughs> even my external hard drive. So it was uh, beyond ridiculous, and it was taking a really long time because every time I'd have to do that, I'd have to reboot. And, uh, you know, when you're auditioning for... Things like you know these these online sites, you know you might you, you want to be fast. there really fast, fast. Right, and you want to and you want to sound good. And you don't want to make and you want to make it sound like you're professional because you are. <laughs> and like I'm not completely frustrated with my operating system and and of the course. recording software. So um, then once I got that handled, um, you know I I at least got it working. The the big problem was this hum this super high pitched hum that was in the back in the background right. yeah would, you, so. would you call it a whine even like a yes yes yes, yes. well yeah. you know what yes. that is that is your m box the m box you yes, know not a... not not to say anything nasty about our friends at at, at avid and digi design but they really suck uh, they're made in <laughs> i guess they're made in china uh, they uh they we found George and I have mutual experience have found that if you use an M box within two years or less, you will start to develop that type of a noise. We're not sure what it's from, except that when you stop using an M box, that that noise goes away. Amazingly. Yeah, it kind of goes away sometimes. I mean, I had this happen to Scott Rummel just recently. It, it happens to everybody. It, I hooked up an M box to his iMac in his home studio. And we got the exact same sound. And I messed around. I plugged a ground lip. Here's what you can try. You can try getting those uh, dollar um, ground adapter plug things that you use in an old house that doesn't have those three-prong outlets. Mm -hmm. have, you know, have you ever seen those? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah. Don't they have a little wire hanging out of them? Well, yeah. Sometimes they have a little sometimes, wire sometimes. or a little prong. And yeah. uh, you can plug that into various um, things that are in involved in your studio. Your mic preamp. If you don't have a mic preamp, you can plug it into the computer's power cord. You can plug it into a the your display, your actual monitor. Um, plug that and just try it in these different locations. And I've had pretty good success rates with getting rid of the wine by ground lifting certain things in the studio. But in the case of Scott Rommel, I did that. I went home. He's an hour away from me. Calls me the next day. He says the sound's back. And I'm like totally scratching my head so i ended up replacing the uh, interface with with something else um actually an audio fire too and actually getting rid of pro tools and installing twisted wave and blah 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 but um so but moral of the story is yeah it could be fixable with a dollar uh, ground lifter start um, experimenting with plugging it into different places in your studio and see if the sound changes or goes away completely that would be my first thing to try if that doesn't work call us back. 
Yes. Well, and also, yeah. I thought for sure that it was, uh, you know, I started thinking because I, I started thinking about it being a ground issue. So I did. I unplugged and replugged, and but it was still there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's um, okay. So you did experiment with the ground thing? Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. You've changed USB cables. Everything. You've changed USB ports. You've, been, you've yes. changed everything but the M box. Yes. Right. Okay. Guess what's well, next? <laughs> guess what? Guess what's going on next? And, that, and you know where we're going to go with that. Thing. Uh, and also, but we've also heard that, yeah. that the 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 new Pro Tools uh, supposedly can use uh, any, any interface. almost any in, any uh, interface. So yeah. you may not have to use an M box if you want to use Pro Tools. But yeah. I have a feeling you're probably tiring of Pro Tools as well. Um, How, yeah, what's your opinion? Yeah, because I cannot, you know, I got to do this, you know, toggling back and forth, you know, rebooting every time I want to go online and upload an audition or yeah. something to an agent. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, well, try that and we'll see if that helps. Okay. Thanks, All Bobbin. All right, thanks for calling, Bobbin. Thank you, guys. Take care. All right, have yourself a good evening. Okay, okay. bye-bye. Two down. Two down. We're we're actually it's actually happening, George. Amazing. Yeah, we're well, doing. Well, we've it. got more. We've got more guests coming up. We've got another caller in just a little bit. We're also going to do some voiceover trivia. Not easy to find, but we have a little bit, and we have a very special guest. You want to announce who our special guest is, George? Before we go to the break here. Yeah, coming up uh, in our, our second half hour of the show, we've got Pat Fraley coming on. Wow. Pat Fraley, right here, and he's got great stuff to say to us. So we'll be right back, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back on East West Audio Body Shop. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. And we are back on East West Audio Body Shop. Dan Leonard here in the East George with him out there in the West, hopefully getting his scuba gear on. I hear it's raining like crazy out in California. I think it's absolutely amazing that we can be here and do a coast-to-coast uh, internet show like this uh, all the way from Buffalo and Los Angeles and cover the entire country and the entire world and answer your questions. Once again, if you have a question for us, you can email it to us at... E-W-A-B-S, E-Webs, one, E-Webs, the number one, at Verizon.net, and you can get on here, and I think we're going to be giving out East West Audio Body Shop coffee mugs to our guests when they come on, if that's any incentive to you. Of course, now we have to go out and make East West Audio Body Shop coffee mugs, and we're probably going to have to start an East West Audio Body Shop shop. Anyway, we're getting ready for our next caller here. Yeah, we can't and find is, is her she, yet. Oh, she, we know she's there. We yeah, know she's there. She's, uh, not, she's not around yet. So, Sarah, if you are listening, give us a call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or log into Skype, please. Yeah, we, we, we know you're here. So this is called vamping. Yeah. No, she's, okay, yeah, we, 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 we know she's around, but she's just not logged into Skype. Maybe she got kicked off or no, she's, she's on she's Wi-Fi on... or... You see her on oh. your Skype list? I, she's on my Skype list. Oh, well, then oh. she didn't accept my friend. Uh, oh, okay. She didn't accept well, maybe my I... friend thing. Put her oh, on. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll call her. Let yeah. me see if. So Dan, uh, Dan is now being remotely held because he called Sira, and that uh, basically hangs up his side of the conversation for now. So now it's my turn to vamp. But this is like a dream for me to do this because. I never thought that I would be actually able to do something in the, in the performance realm. And that's basically what this is. So I'm really excited about it. I really appreciate you guys hanging on. We've got 66 viewers, I see, which is fantastic. Outstanding. See okay. Okay. So, no, she's actually on the other line here, but you can't hear me there. Okay. So. Yeah. We, uh, you, we lose your picture and everything. So we really need her to uh, okay. allow me to see her on Skype because right now I can't see her. Okay. She hasn't allowed me. All right. Hold on one second. She hasn't allowed you. Okay. 
like we said, this is sort of like a dress rehearsal. We're working mm -hmm. on. Uh, yeah, you know, in a regular radio show, there, there's production people in the other room who are handling lining up all the callers. They've got backup callers lined up. You know, they've got everything. They've got every contingency you can imagine. We're literally doing this with two people: me trying to establish the calls before each uh, before we bring them on, and uh, Dan trying to hold it all together. He's the glue. So. Uh, here he comes back. Let's see okay. what he has to say. Okay, I'm back. And we're back! <laughs> All righty. She's in there. She's trying to recognize, she's trying to get recognized on, on Skype with you. You know, this is, it's a, it, it's a miracle that we can even do this. You know, what's it his is. name? Anderson Cooper can be in the middle of Afghanistan and we can talk to him. But, you know, sometimes it's kind of tough just doing it on the internet here. But it's, it's, at it's least amazing. we're doing it. It's amazing. So, and the only thing here that costs money on the outright is some of the gear. But, I mean, the software we're using is free. Skype is free. Ustream is free. Um, it's Facebook, of course, which is how we got everybody to be here today, is, you know, it's, it's free. It's just amazing what we can pull off with um, open source technology like this. It just blows my mind. It, it absolutely is. There we go. So, Let's see. Now we're getting okay. someplace. She All right. now says that she's so, online. So, again, if you... So if you have a question, again, you can email us at ewebs1 at verizon.net, and we'll try and get you on next week if you've got a real serious problem. Also, we'd like to tell you and remind you that George and I are professional consultants, and we are both available for private consultation to take care of your home studio problems. And you can reach me at homestudiomaster.com, uh, and my email is homestudiomaster at verizon.net. And, George, where the, can they reach you? Uh, they can reach me at uh, my website, vostudiotech.com. And I think we got someone waiting to talk to us. All righty. Good evening. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Who's calling? Hi, this is Sarah from Orlando, Florida. Hello, Sarah from Orlando, are you there, Florida. Guys? How are you this evening? We're here. Can <laughs> you hear good. us? I'm good. Thank you. So, can you hear me okay? what's your problem? I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Okay, okay. I'm having trouble We've hearing you, though. We've got a little though. bit of a delay. It's the delay. Okay. We've got uh, two Skype uh, connections going in two different parts of the country. So we In the back. Um, so I had to um, order one from Newegg, and I manually installed it. And it seemed to work swimmingly until I noticed it was arbitrarily defaulting back to the original settings where the decibel is way low. Um, uh -huh. So I have to keep going into the audio hardware setup and change it to like like a you know 12 decibel boost, you know, mm -hmm. um, just to get it to sound okay. Otherwise, it's great, but that's my hard luck story. So I'd appreciate any help I could get. <laughs> Okay, let's see. All right. Well, uh, the the issue to start off with is that you have Windows Seven, and we have been discovering day after day, week after week, when people call us and ask, "Why am I having this trouble?" And I go, "What is your operating system?" And they almost always say, "Windows 7. Seven. Sometimes they sometimes they say Vista. And we have uh -huh. found that Windows 7 uh, was not designed really to uh, was really not designed to go in for for professional audio. Yeah, it right. was designed uh, for by by whoever those guys are at Microsoft to do something, but it's not professional audio, and it has a mm. tendency to have a mind of its own. So mm. now I'm back. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, yeah, that's about the best way to describe it. I mean. What it is, it's sort of a battle. It's a battle of the wills between the Microsoft Windows audio control panel and drivers and everything, and then the audio drivers mm -hmm. that come with your um, audio interface. And which which sound device did you say you have? Firebox. Uh, Presonus is Firebox. Firebox, right? Okay. Firebox, yeah. And and, and by the way, I I can feel Bobbin's pain um, because the M box didn't work for me either. So, but this is fantastic. I love it. Yeah, it's. Pretty well known and liked unit. Um, um, so, is the audio control you're always having to make changes to the um, in the Windows control panel sound area? 
Uh, no, actually, it's um, I go into my audition. I use Adobe Audition 3 right. and I go into it and I go into the hardware, audio hardware and change the setting there. You know, I find the Firebox and change it there. So there's an actual uh, volume slider or control from within Adobe Audition that you adjust? Uh, um, no, it's not a slider. There's actually a, a pop-up box that, you know, that shows uh, the uh, PreSonus Firebox. You know, there's like a control panel for it. And then there's like these little, you can tick these little check box and it'll say, you know, 12 dB boost, you know, um, right, on or off. Right. And I just have to click on that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It does. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, it's, it allows yeah. you to increase the gain in the software because the levels are too low. Is it the problem is that box gets yes. unchecked all the time at random? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it just gets unchecked arbitrarily for no, I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to it, you know? Um, May, I think it may happen when my computer goes to sleep, and then when I go to restart it, um, that'll happen. Uh, yep. It's really embarrassing when like, I'm in the middle of a phone patch with someone. So it can something. literally happen mid-session. It can. Yeah, it has. <laughs> you know, not very often. but and, and, and days will go by where it's fine, and then all of a sudden it'll default back to this very low um, uh, setting. Wow. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, we've we've seen a tremendous amount of this in the last couple of months. Uh, when people have been transitioning to to Windows Seven, that as we said, it has a mind of its own. We're not exactly sure what's going on. We're we're doing some more research to find out why this why this particular uh, operating system is doing this, and it doesn't seem to matter what hardware you're yeah, using, what software you're using, uh, mm -hmm. and and it's very very frustrating. Uh, we we have a solution, but we've we've promised not to be very preachy about it tonight. Well, let, let, let me let me ask you this. Um, let me ask you a couple of quick questions, and what my pledge is, is my pledge is, is that we will try to find what seems to be the, a right answer, and we'll, we'll post it on Facebook so that okay. you know you can get it and everybody else can get it. It'll be on our wall. Great. But okay. um, let me ask you a couple more questions, real quick. So you're running Windows Seven. Sure. We know that, but do you know if it's seventy? I'm sorry, thirty-two bit or sixty-four bit? Sixty-four. Okay, sixty-four. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, Generally, there's a lot more problems with 64-bit, but that's that's mm. a known thing. And then I, and then your Adobe Edition three, and yeah. um, I think there may be some funny business with AA three and 64-bit Windows. Um, um, I just helped somebody a couple weeks ago who had a similar issue, so hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna look into Adobe Audition support. I don't think it's the Personas per se that's mm -hmm. to blame here. I I think it's an Adobe Audition Windows 64-bit. Um, mm battle going like, on here yeah battle exactly yeah yeah right. um because i was using actually vista which there was no love lost when I, my computer crashed and i you know i didn't like vista anyway but uh, um the firebox was was working well with it is it could it george could it be that um i manually installed a, the, a new fireware port i mean could that have something to do with it do you think you manually installed you mean you had to install a pci card with firewire yeah Yes, I did. Yeah, because it didn't have, you know, the when I bought the PC, I went, uh-oh, it doesn't have a FireWire port in the back where I normally would, you know, plug in the, you know, the PreSonus. So, um, is it a FireWire uh, card, what, a PC, basically like a PCI or PCIe FireWire card? Yes. Right? Yeah, that's it. It's, I got a, it's Rosewill, I think, the brand. Rosewill, right. um, uh, but anyway, when I, <clears throat> I mean, it, it installed beautifully and it worked great. Do you know anything but more about the hardware of the computer chipset? Does that does that mean anything you do when I say chipset? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I've heard of that, but I, I'm, you're going to lose me with okay. that. <laughs> is it a Dell? Is okay. it a Dell? And, and or, probably a lot of the audience. Too. Yeah, is it a Dell or an it's, HP? Or? It's an a, it's an HP. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it that gives me something to work things. with. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, that's that's definitely that's definitely something we we've been working on and trying to solve for the last couple of months and. Uh, you know, it's going to be a continuing mystery, but at least we know we have it isolated to the software, and we're going to try and figure out what's the best way to, to work around that so that doesn't happen to you all the time. Well, that's great. I appreciate that. Our pleasure. Thanks uh, for being on our show tonight. Oh, thank you, guys. You guys are great. Thank you, Sarah. We try. Thank you. All righty. <laughs> you don't have to try. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Thanks for calling. Thank you so much. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, three down, George. So we're we're answering those questions out there. Again, if you have a question, 
uh, give us a, uh, an email at ewabs1 at verizon.net. And if you've got a big problem, you can be on the air and we can solve your problem right here on East West. Oh, right in the middle of Minutes. the plugs. So, oh, here he comes. You froze for a second. Oh. You went right, right in the middle of East West. It went, Ur! and you froze. Oh, well. <laughs> but, um, Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Um, I was going to say, oh, while we had a few minutes, I'm going to get Pat on the phone here. So after, while I'm doing that, or right before I do that, um, I just want to informally thank BSW because right now I'm using a console that they provided as a, as a demo that I may not be sending what back. Guy? It's a uh, it's a <laughs> Allen and Heath XB14, and while it may be kind of overkill for the most voice actors, it really is a it's a board designed for broadcast, and it's what allow it's a, what's allowing me to uh, to do things like answer calls from or establish phone calls with people while we're on the air and talk back and forth with them, and it's it's very flexible and it's got built-in USB to the computer. It just it's a beautiful console, so. I just want to thank BSW. Uh, it's like being on the radio. Yeah, BSWUSA.com is um, a great company to deal with, and um, I want to thank them. So, Dan, let me throw it back to you, and while you uh, tell everybody about our next guest, Pat, I will get him on the phone. Okay, excellent. Well, so far we've solved a couple of problems here. We've had uh, our, our, our friend Chris called about his problem with acoustical problems and getting sound from the outside to not come into the inside. And Bobbin had her problem with, uh, with, with uh, her M box and Sarah with her problem with windows seven. There's a lot of different weird things that can go on in a home studio. And uh, we just want to make sure that everybody gets to understand that it's not rocket science. It's easy to do. And uh, we'll, we'll try and make it easy for you. But before we go on to our next segment here, we have a little bit of voiceover trivia or voiceover engineering trivia. And most of you should know what I'm talking about, but you'll probably never know what it came from. So did you ever wonder where 48 volt phantom power came from? Well, I never knew why, what, what it, where it came from or the idea of it until recently. And I saw some original condenser microphones from back in the thirties and they were much more than 48 volts. But anyway, I was trying to think of some useless voiceover trivia to post, and so I found this thing. Although other forms of phantom power had been used before, the first use of 48-volt phantom power found in so many professional microphones today was on a Neumann, or as, uh, as Chris said, a Newman. Hello, Newman. A Neumann microphone, the KM84, manufactured for a Norwegian radio station in 1966. So now... Remember, if your condenser microphone isn't working, always check the phantom power. So, anyway, do we have Chris on the phone, or do we have uh, Pat with us yet there, uh, George? Yes, we do. And you, you've been in the, in the voice business a long time. Now, I don't want to overemphasize it. I realize when they invented the microphone, you weren't actually there holding the magnets. But how long have you been in the voiceover business, and, 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 and what got you into it, briefly? Uh, Dan, 37 years. I uh, finished uh, wow. acting school in New York, and I emigrated to Australia in 74, and I discovered it over there. I was in it so early, they didn't call it voiceover. They just called us actors that came in and recorded. And uh, that was my first experience with it. That's great. So, but Now, you've done so many different things. Have you done anything that people would? Uh, I mean, I mean, thousands of, of voices and cartoons, and I know you've been, you've done sitcoms and things like that. Can you give us something that perhaps we didn't know it was you, but we recognized exactly that it was a, a unique voice that we we would remember? Well, I just did a sound like for Charlie Manson for a new cartoon show called Sparkle dot com. I'm not exactly. Uh, sure what I should feel about that. I mean, you know, I'd like to sound like was like Brad Pitt or something, but that's what I got. But I suppose uh, the only thing that comes to mind is uh, in I Am Legend, the movie with uh, um, Will... Oh, shoot. My mind's putty. <laughs> anyway, I'm the president coming over the radio. Smith. That's kind of cool. <laughs> George remembers. <laughs> oh, you're the president yeah. coming over the radio? 
Yeah, I'm the president. And, and there were so few people in that movie. I went to MGM to do the, uh, you know, one sentence where he, he, he uh, um, uh, shuts down New York. And the director was there and Will Scott. And I thought, I said, geez, you know, I'm just coming in for this little thing. And he goes, we have no one else to play with. <laughs> Now, now, Pat, you, you do a lot of teaching, and you work with a lot of students, and you've, you've been very interested in, in, in the technology and the things that, that George and I have been researching and working with other people on. And I was interested in, in hearing what you had to say about when you talk to your students or when, when, you're, when you're lecturing, what do you tell them about what audio quality should be? Is there a difference, really, between uh, what you should sound like on an, on an audition and what broadcast quality is? Not in 2011. It's just, uh, I have been reading recently on the last week some posts and some conversations in our, uh, in our community, and it's, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, it's like having an 8x10. Instead of having a, your picture, you go in for an audition, uh, going in with a Polaroid. I mean, it, the, the thing about it is, uh, Dan and uh, George, and I'm certainly, I'm certainly not telling you anything, the amount of money to pay out for a good microphone is about $150 for an AT2020. And getting a nice, quiet situation in your house for a few minutes because it's an audition, it's no big deal. And then you, send, and then you normalize it properly. What I find, and I have 3,000 students, I get a lot of MP3s from students and a lot of stuff during the week. I find one of the key problems they have, when, after they get the sound clean, and it's a quiet room. And uh, what I find is they don't normalize. And by that I mean bring up the volume so there's a nice fat signal on that MP3 they send. Why do you want to have it very strong? Because that way the person on the, the listening side does not have to turn up whatever crappy little speakers they have and bring dirt to the party. Better for them to turn down their amps and listen to yours, which will be much less. And uh, the importance of, of, of uh, it's your best foot forward. It's more important in audition and broadcast, to tell you the truth. By the time they put music behind it in production, it's not less critical than having your voice sound terrific. So I encourage all my students to step up from what, a Samson or whatever they have to an AT2020. I wish Audio Tech, they should be paying us money, shouldn't they? Because uh, if I have anything to I do with it, they will be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah me good. too. Yeah, and there's and there's some, and there's some other good, yeah. There's some other good USB mics out there too. The AT2020 uh, Audio Technica Audio Technica is selling millions of them. I mean, just literally, they've they've been able to mass produce them, and it maintains a very good quality signal. And for it's a great road mic, and uh, and we've proven that if you set it up in the right acoustical situation, it will sound almost as good as just about any other mic. Yeah. One final comment. Because you're auditioning, you can find a modest place in the home that's very quiet or you can pad around you. Why? Because you're only there for a limited amount of time. I mean, I have bird squawks between takes and I have uh, helicopters and trucks and stuff. But because I'm only recording for a few minutes, I can work around that. Any other uh, circumstance with a home recording and they need to see you guys. Uh, I just uh, got a new house that has a built-in studio. And uh, I told somebody, or I don't know, blog, blog or I said, the first call I'm making is to get a fridge. The second call is to George. Thanks, Pat. That's pretty nice of you, man. <laughs> is that well, to, is that to help me uh, fill the beer? I, is that to help you fill the uh, fridge with beer? Up. I have no. I'm just buttering you up because I have no money. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, the, one of the things that we want to do here on East West Bo Audio Body Shop is give people the chance to shamelessly promote. Otherwise, why be here? Well, first and foremost, uh, there is a matter of support. Um, it, it's a matter of a support community. I find, uh, uh, I have, as I mentioned, I have a great many students <clears throat> and in L.A. and New York and around the country, and many c uh, considering a move. <clears throat> As far as business goes and as far as the focus on what a performer has skills to do and their desires, animation must be done in Los Angeles. 
that's pretty much the reason why I came to Los Angeles rather than New York when I was a young man. Uh, there's just no other place that they have the lion's share of animation work. Uh, but going back to the concept of support, uh, a community to support them, um, the opportunity for employment for a day job, I think that the, the, that, that's important, and that guides you to either the East or West Coast. Um, the nature of the work is uh, different in uh, New York. There, there seems to be a better, my students, they seem to do a better job at commercial auditioning and working that market than in Los Angeles or Chicago. But I do believe the entire country has been uh, really um, le left, the, the talent has been left um, in a very bad situation uh, in the last three years over auditions. I don't believe, I know a person cannot make a career go of it by auditioning. It's return customers. And so there, there's no lion's share or bulk of work anymore that's available for a player that comes to either Chicago, New York, or Los Angeles in commercials. Um, that's not linked terrestrially. There's too many uh, people and, and uh, uh, organizations that are offering the services of auditioning, Voice, uh, Voices.com, Voice123, Voice Hunter, uh, and then also regional, um, uh, regional uh, agents. So that's, that golden, uh, or that brass ring rather is not here anymore. It's not anywhere. Uh, I have some thoughts on how to effectively work voiceover, and it's international. There's such a need for mid-Atlantic, in other words, not British nor American dialect English, in both Europe and Asia. They have a lot of a bulk of work that needs to be recorded, usually long-form narration. That would be, you know, far. He'll be back for information in companies. That's a huge market. And it will test the entrepreneurial spirits of all of we who do voiceover. Uh, but going back to Los Angeles or New York, support is very important. Um, I, came. I literally quit my day job kicking and screaming because I could not uh, accomplish all the voiceover work and keep the day job. That's when I left it. And that's the reality of any kind of circumstance. Uh, I mean, uh, sure, when I went to Australia, I had like $50. That's what I immigrated with, but I was young and dumb. I think that it's that important because there's resources that have to go out. One has to get, you know, uh, killer demos, and I mean killer ones now. And they also have to get into the union before even seeking representation with a, a union agency. So um, if I were a young man... I would probably not come to Los Angeles or New York uh, to make money. If I, if I were gener propelled to do the best work that's available in the country, and let's face it, you don't get jobs working on movies anywhere else but Los Angeles in voiceover or anything else. Certainly television is a center. But for voiceover, if I were generated by making money, I would not leave Des Moines. I would work the world from... I work the cloud as it's called these days. Yeah, absolutely. And you can you can do it from Des Moines, you can do it from Buffalo, you can do it from Orlando or North Carolina, and uh, and absolutely. people are doing it. I have cuss I have a I have a student who lives in South Africa who makes three hundred plus thousand dollars working the cloud for voiceover. I have a student in the South that makes zero money from his local town and a good six figure from working around the country and some internationally but they but they really work the they really work the business side gleaning auditions that are available having a very effective ways of finding those auditions by google alerts and they're chained chained to the computer but when they get the work they they go in the, their own home recording facility and i think of course it's never been more critical if one wants to work outside of Los Angeles or outside major metropolitan areas or certainly, well, anywhere, to have a home recording facility that is uh, effective and simple. It's real important. Yes. I, my, my new home that I have has a, uh, oh, I suppose about a 200-square-foot booth and a 1,000-square-foot control room when you get right down to it in the home. And hmm. George is going to have to help me a whole lot, but... That's what, that's what I think is needful for my students and for my recording. 
Thank you, Pat. Pat, that's great. And I appreciate you coming on with us tonight on our premiere show and, and, and sharing your thoughts with us. And uh, I'm sure we'll have you on again when we talk about some other subject. And, of course, if you have any studio problems, we'll always be happy to have you on here and try and solve them. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I so much appreciate your expertise, both of you. And, Dan, I can't tell you, you know, uh, you talk about getting a piece of AT2020. I must refer people to you three or four times a week because I know you personally. I know how you think. You've even uh, helped me with a recording on my modest uh, little book called The Gypsy's Guide to Home Recording. Um, but I, I lean on you guys. Uh, I mean, the, the rubber meets the road when, when I've hired you. That, that's actually better than a referral, and I have both of you because you're just that good. And what I really appreciate about you guys is what you do is so simple. I mean, you make it so simple for people to understand. And, and true mentors and true teachers of value make things simple. They don't make them complex. Well, we really appreciate that. Thanks for being with us tonight. It's my pleasure. Anytime, anything you want to talk about, if I have anything to offer, I'd be more than happy to. Thanks, Pat. Stay Very dry good. and stay warm. Thanks, Pat. Okay. Best wishes right, on your, good your body shop. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Did he just call us a chop shop? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if any, everybody out there watching the show was probably laughing at the chop shop phrase because... The signal on our broadcast has dropped no less than four times and three times during Pat's segment alone. So, um, right. yeah, it's been real choppy tonight, and I'm sorry for that, everybody. I'm really frustrated. But we have a monsoon out there, and I guess Time Warner's uh, uh, wires are probably getting flooded or something. I don't know. But uh, but we're still but we're still on, and we're that's still the most on. important thing. And, uh, although I think I am frozen right now. But anyway, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. And we have, a, we have another person with a problem that needs to be solved. And we'll also have the weird voiceover experience of the week. So stay tuned. This is Dan Leonard and George Whittem, East West Audio Body Shop. Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. And we're back. All right. We're back here on East West Audio Body Shop. Dan Leonard, George Whittem here. And it's time to get to our next caller. Who's calling East West Audio Body Shop tonight? It's Pat from Toronto. Pat from Toronto. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. There's a little bit of a delay. You got to think about it. Your voice is going from... Toronto to Los Angeles, from Los Angeles to Buffalo, back to Los Angeles, and then back to Toronto. So amazing that we're that's only like a two three second delay. So Pat, so are you having as a little like bit of problem months. with your your studio tonight? Yes, you're having a little bit of trouble with yes. your studio. Well, yeah. I, I, first of all, thanks for putting the show on. Uh, you know, great stuff. This uh, is definitely long overdue. I'm on uh, basically the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, I've been in the business for a couple of years. And uh, I've uh, got a fairly deep, resonant sound uh, behind the microphone. And it can certainly come across uh, pretty powerful and quite booming uh, in some of the recorded auditions here in my booth. And I was just wondering if there's anything I can do to control or, or minimize that low-end delivery behind the mic. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's, there's... there's we, got, uh, we could, yeah, one, we could one, look at uh, possible... Solutions might include, um, well, the the advice we gave the first caller, um, judicious use or proper use of a base roll-off or a high-pass filter um, can be really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, If it's set correctly, it will complement your voice rather than kill the voice. Um, and so, you okay. know, it's a matter of getting those, those two um, set correctly so they... Um, they jive together. If you set the high pass filter wrong, it'll take away too much of the fullness or the richness of your voice. 
But, you know, that's a really delicate line. Um, too much fullness, too much richness, richness, boominess takes away clarity. So almost uh, homes in Toronto don't have quite the space that some other cities do. It's sort of like living in Japan, as I recall. Uh, uh, and, unfortunately, uh, I, did, so I don't. You, you, I just don't have that walk-in closet, you know, where I can, you know, work within that environment. It's just everything is very, very small and enclosed and cloistered. Right. Well, the most important thing you can do, as George was saying, is we, you need to dampen things and, and actually have a small room, at least the way I look at it. You were, you're doing the right thing with the duvet, and one of the things you can do is maybe try and make that, the area a little bigger and let the low frequencies dissipate a little bit and use the, I, I know the type of thing you're talking about. It's how big did you say this, this box is? Uh, it's pretty small, three feet by three feet. Okay. So it's three feet by three feet. And you want to make sure that you're not like putting the microphone deep into this thing and like in a cavern. The idea behind this is to try and dampen your voice so it doesn't bounce back around the room. And so you bring the microphone out a little bit and you dampen behind you by taking the duvet and putting it maybe over a room divider or something three, four feet behind you and not getting too close to the mic and getting too close to the uh, to the box itself. Keep that safe distance that we always talk about, which is that five to seven inches away from your pop screen. The pop screen should be three inches from the mic and you should be five to seven inches away from the mic. And uh, and that's really the proper distance. So I, I hope it, you, that you're you're keeping that type of distance. If you do that, that should eliminate some of the boominess too. No, I definitely am keeping away from the mic, uh, but uh, I'll have to uh, get a little more creative. It's frustrating when you've got such a noisy household. Uh, just don't have that perfect setup. But to be to be honest with you, I haven't had a client yet uh, complain of my audio quality. Which totally surprises me. Well, that's. But uh, I'm always. Uh, well, that's. I'm always searching uh, for any new solutions to enhance it. Right. Well, if nobody's complaining, then I wouldn't worry about it. But then again, you don't. You never know. If it's not quite up to snuff, you wonder. Well, what auditions am I not getting? Because perhaps they thought maybe it was like this or something along those lines. But keep working at it, and and we'll see how your how your sound improves, and you yeah. come visit us again and. And see if those suggestions help. And if you want to, Pat, um, Go ahead, George. I think you know about the Dropbox on my website already, but drop a file with the things exactly the way it is now, and I'll take a listen to it. Both Dan and I will take a listen, and we'll see where the um, the base buildup is really occurring and see if it maybe is a simple solution of an EQ setting, mic technique, or if we have to do something a little bit more severe like adding some low end. But you obviously sought me out why is it that you sought me out? He goes, well, we're doing a, a thing about the uh, about a yacht designer. And the second he said yacht designer, I understood why they had contacted me. If you look up my name, my name is spelled D-A-N-L-E-N-A-R-D. If you do a web search, you'll find plenty of me, but you'll also find the top exotic yacht designer in the world, a guy named Dan Leonard, who apparently had been doing a Google search on himself. Like, of course, none of you guys do Google searches on yourself. Apparently, he had done a Google search on himself and found that there was a voice artist in America named Dan Leonard, and he told the producers, hey, why don't you have Dan Leonard do the voiceover for the video about Dan Leonard? And I still work with these guys in Slovenia, and so you never know where these jobs are going to come from, and so always try to be your best and always be optimistic. And for you guys that are just beginning, make sure you're stocked up on mac and cheese and... It will happen. You got to believe. George, any final thoughts from you? We, we made it through the hour. Son of a gun. We did. We did. I think the signals dropped, uh, the, the feed dropped about six times, which is the worst thing that's ever happened so far. But we've had a lot of people in the chat room here that have stuck it out. And, um, you know, I've been trying to keep up, keep up what's going on in the chat room. And um, a lot of great people. Thanks so much for those that stuck it out all the way. And, we're going to work out the digital glitches and the de and the, uh, the the bugs, and this was our pilot show. So based on Nothing. you know the reaction we're getting, I, I know we're going to want to keep doing this. Right. I, I, you know, considering we've never done it before, I think we did pretty well. So that's going to do it for us tonight. Again, if you have a question, something you want to help us solve, 
We want to get stumped. Well, we don't want to get stumped, but we want people to try and stump us. We don't think it's possible. We've <laughs> seen it all. And remember, you know, if you ask a friend over, how many times, George, do we hear that somebody says, well, I had a friend over to, who was, apparently knows about you know, recording, and he did this to my studio, and usually it's us you know, taking the handy wipes to clean up afterwards. After yeah. these mistakes are made. It, it happens. I mean, you know, there's a lot of very helpful voice talent out there who are helping other voice talent. And, you know, they do their best. They'll, they'll say, well, this works for me. Give this a try. But they don't know the rest of the picture. So, you know, we're, we're there to make sure that every element of the, the recording process is nothing is overlooked, you know. Right. Every voice is different. Every room is different. Every mic is different. We're all snowflakes. There's plenty of work to go around, and uh, the, it's all, you're a totally unique person, and your studio is very unique. You have to understand the unique environment that is a home studio. And that's why we're here on East West Audio Body Shop every week, and we'll be here to answer your questions again. That email address is ewabs1, E-W-A-B-S-1, at verizon.net. And we'll see you next week. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. I'm George Whittem in the West. And we're East-West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Take care, everybody. Good night.